Hey folks, this is Mike Thalfson from the Microsoft Education team. We are doing our third ever remote learning with Microsoft EDU. And as those of you that have joined with my bad Wi-Fi and our snafu last couple days, you'll know that we're learning as we go. So we're having lots of fun. But today we've got probably some of the funnest, uh, real world funnest folks around. We've got Team Flipgrid. But before we get there, let's just go through the agenda really quick. So I'll, I'll just do a couple minutes on the latest news and updates because there's always new things going out. We're going to have Joey Terrelson from the Flipgrid team talk about the Flipgrid family and what they're seeing and how they're helping the community. And then we're going to have a master class demo from Ann Cosma with a little assistance from Jess. So if we can go to the next slide, I'll do the latest news. Quick links. These are the same we've showed the first few times. And Microsoft Remote Learning, so that is the main place if you want to get all the information on our remote learning, what we're doing, there's a lot of stuff happening. Also, the Teams Education Quick Start Guide. That is one that gets you up and running on Teams for remote learning. And then join the community. There's people who are already in the community watching it now. Share this with us educators, school leaders, families, whoever you want, join our remote learning community and we've got lots of great information to help out. And then just to recap some of the news pieces from today, announcement, Teams meetings and Schoology have integration. So just like we announced Canvas integrates with Teams meetings, just launched Schoology with Teams meetings as well. So if you're using Schoology, you can integrate Microsoft Team meetings into the calendar really easy. It's really slick, just came out. We also have a brand new school leaders and remote learning guide. So if you're a school leader and you're trying to communicate a very structured and explicit plan in terms of day one and day two, we're gonna do PD, day three and four, we're gonna work with students, day five, launch the learning plan, like many schools out there are doing right now, it's a brand new set of very explicit and structured information that's designed to have school leaders move forward rapidly if we're going to be moving to distance learning. And then lastly, and maybe, maybe Joey and Ann will talk about this a little bit, uh, the Mac Family Learning Center, which is something that was put together by, really headed up by Charlie and team Flipgrid working across Microsoft to pull together some incredible resources for families because families are impacted during this whole environment as well. And so with that, I'm going to introduce Joey Terrelson from Team Flipgrid. And Joey's an amazing guy. There's probably a lot of folks know him. He doesn't really need an introduction. So I'm going to turn it over to Joey. I've always been good at introducing myself. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Appreciate all of you being here. Uh, like Mike, Mike mentioned, my name is Joey Terrelson. I'm Director of, of, of Engagement on Team Flipgrid. And uh, together alongside all of us on Team Flipper, there's about 40 of us, most in Minnesota, um, others spread throughout the world. We support the millions uh, of educators around the world who are using Flipgrid to maintain community among their class, to see and hear from every one of their learners, uh, no matter the distance between them, anytime, anywhere. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, I want to thank everybody in line for being here with us today. I want to wish uh, all of you health and safety during this time. We know that many of you are juggling many responsibilities, both in your jobs, at home, amongst your families. We really appreciate you taking time to spend uh, a few minutes with us here this evening. Um, at least it's, it's evening in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I am. Um, we are here to support you. Um, my colleague Ann is going to tell you in just a few moments everything you need to know about Flipgrid. Um, we're going to show you how easy it is to get up and running. It just takes a few minutes to get started. We're going to share with you how educators are using Flipgrid in remote learning scenarios and know that any of us on Team Flipgrid will help you at any time. If you email support at flipgrid.com, you're going to get my colleagues Kevin, Jennifer, uh, Justin, Shireen, but you're gonna really have access to any of us on Team Flipgrid. We are a family and we are supporting our educator family around the world um, as they navigate these uncertain times. Um, so thank you again for being here. Thank you for all you are doing to support your families and your learning communities. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my friend, Anne, who's gonna tell you everything you need to know about Flipgrid specifically in remote learning environments. Take it away, Anne. 
Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. As Joey mentioned, my name is Ann Cosma, and I have the great privilege of being one of the educator innovation leads on Team Flipgrid. And as Joey mentioned, I just want to say on behalf of our team, thank you. Thank you for doing what you are doing every single day to empower your scholars around the world. And as he said, we are here for you. We love to start professional development by saying conversations that start today don't have to end today. So as you explore pathways to support your learning community, if you're exploring remote learning or you're on a remote learning situation, please know Flipgrid as this asynchronous video discussion platform is the tool that allows you to have a vibrant community and you can connect from anywhere. You are not bound by time or distance. So my goal for this training is to actually share, excuse me, to share a few resources with you. I'm going to talk through them and then I'm going to show you what it actually looks like when you go inside of a grid as a participant. So you can see that vibrant community and how every unique picture showing an individual is a celebration of voice. I'm also going to go into the actual Flipgrid platform and show you how to get started, what it means to create a grid, how simple and easy it is to share that with your community and how you add topics. Then I'll circle back to resources and we're ready to get going. So friends, when you get started, if you simply navigate to flipgrid.com, you'll notice a few things immediately on the screen. In the top right corner, you have quick access to incredible Flipgrid resources. Our newest tab right there in the first position where it says remote learning is the quickest shortcut to get to our new remote learning resources. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and show you what you have available. So this blog post speaks specifically about how you can use Flipgrid to support your community if they are learning for home, from home or anywhere. And in as simple as five minutes, you can get started by creating a grid and sharing it with your community. Beyond that, we do include a bunch of tips for how you could engage your students and families. Whether it's a quick check-in, a daily reflection, sharing a dance party or a pet parade, the possibilities are endless for empowering your community to share their voice. So that is available. Again, if you simply navigated to flipgrid.com, you would find that quick resource you can click on immediately to get there. Now, if you were to want to see this from a participant view, when you scroll down on the screen, you have the opportunity to enter a flip code. This is that unique join code that your community will use to enter your grid. I'm going to show you an example of one right now. All right. So we are at flipgrid.com slash certified. And you can see as I scroll down on this screen, this is an example of a dynamic community spread all around the world of educators sharing their voice. And as I briefly mentioned, every smile on this screen represents the thoughts, the ideas, the unique expression of every person sharing their voice. So this is what it looks like when friends and colleagues and students and families gather on Flipgrid and share their ideas. You'll notice on this topic, you can toggle between a few different ones and these are all of the different unique topics or conversations that you can engage your community in on your grid. So what we're going to do now is actually go into the platform and I'm going to log into my own account as an educator and start walking through the process. You'll notice when you log into Flipgrid, and if you haven't created an account yet, please know you can do so simply by navigating to flipgrid.com and tapping on that educator sign up button. Flipgrid is completely free, and we wanna say thank you, of course, to Microsoft for making this platform available for everybody around the world. When you log into your educator admin account, you're going to see it launches right inside your grids. 
I think of this as like home base for where I get started. You can see I actually have 133, 133 grids already created. So unlimited grids, unlimited topics, you have access to every feature throughout Flipgrid. But what I want to do is click on that colorful rectangle that says add a new grid. And when you click on that, you get the grid launch pad. And this is how you get started. So if you're creating an online community, a remote classroom, a connection with your family or community, you simply give your grid a title. Think of this as your classroom. I taught in room four, so I might want to say room four connections. You could use your name to make it identifiable for your community. So I'm going to say Cosma Connections. That way my students recognize it's my teacher account, my grid, and that's how they're going to connect with me. Now notice the next step encourages you to select a grid type. Please choose one that is appropriate for your community. If you're utilizing a school Microsoft or Google email domain, we would encourage you to use this as the way to set up your grid. If your students are not familiar or do not use Microsoft or Google as a school email domain, you could use the student ID grid type where you can manually enter students' names or use a CSV file to upload your student roster. The really cool thing about the student ID grid type is a QR code is automatically created for students to join the grid as well. So this is perfect for even our youngest scholars. If you want to connect as your family or your neighbors and friends to stay connected, you could definitely use the public and PLC grid type. Please know that you will be required to authorize in with a Microsoft or Google email address as well. So I've named my grid. I'm actually going to go and demonstrate by using the school email domain. And then the very last step right here is simply to create a flip code. You can use the one that's automatically created for you or customize it to make it familiar to your community. I'm going to take a moment and personalize that so it's easy to remember for my community. I simply click next. Now, since we are using that school email domain, please know they automatically populate your school email address. If your student's school domain is different than the educator domain, please be sure to enter both of those different emails. So I'm going to show you right now how simple it is. Everything after the at symbol. If you wanted to connect as a grid pal or a collaborator, you could add multiple school email domains here. But please remember a Microsoft or Google account is required. Then you simply click next. All right, your grid is ready and check out how easy it is to kickstart the discussion. I love seeing that share to Microsoft Teams button right there. If you're utilizing other places to connect with your community, you definitely can share with them as well or simply copy that URL and share it via email or print it out and send it home. But what I'm going to do is simply go to my grid and show you what it looks like on your teacher's side. Notice that first introduction topic has already been created for you. And you can use that or start adding additional topics. Think of topics as those discussion prompts, anything you want to engage your community in. And I'm going to call mine a daily check-in. All right, educators have the ability to choose anywhere from 15 seconds um, to a longer length of time anything that's appropriate for the task. And please know when you write the prompt, this is like the discussion, the question, the stimulus text, anything you want to ask your, your community to respond to. So I'm simply going to say, say hello and let us know how you're doing. Sometimes it's super hard to type and text at the same time. If you want to get fancy, add emojis. All right, friends, what you can do now is add a topic focus. You can simply record a video, upload a video. If you want to drop in a link from YouTube or Vimeo, I love adding emojis everywhere I can. So I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to simply select that as a media resource to engage students. And it's that simple. 
those four steps is how you can create a topic immediately and use it with your community. I'm going to take just a moment and explore what's under this more options tab and tell you there are additional features that you can utilize to customize your grid if you want it. A lot of teachers right now might want to consider video moderation if you want to keep videos hidden from students until you choose to activate them. A very powerful feature built in is the ability to allow student to student replies, which means they can extend the conversation by adding video replies to each other. Beyond that, you can do things like toggle on video count, uh, determine whether or not you want students to edit by trimming or rearranging clips. And again, you as the educator customize those settings. One of my favorite things as a teacher is to share the custom feedback tool embedded right within this topic creation. So you could use basic feedback or create any type criteria for feedback for your students. Once you click create topic, you'll notice immediately your topic is ready. And again, friends, you have all of these awesome ways to share with your community, Microsoft Teams, sharing that copy link, or even if you wanted to, you could click on this and download a QR code to share with your community. But I'm gonna say all set and it's ready. You can start the discussion by sharing it with your students. Again, you have that share option and I'm simply going to show you again, all of these options if you want to. You could even toggle on guest mode and invite family members, your administrators, content experts, or any others to add to this specific topic. All right, friends, I know I have a few minutes, so what I wanna do is actually show you what it looks like when you share this um, and go into the Flipgrid camera and have the ability to record a response. Hey, everybody, you'll notice across the bottom of the screen all of these super cool creation tools. If you wanted to turn on a filter and use a pixel mode or add a color overlay, since I said let's check in, I might say, here's my name. I can add as much text as I want to, manipulate it on the screen. Of course, utilize those emoji stickers and get creative. The possibilities are endless. There's a live inking tool and your students can use this to share all kinds of ways with all kinds of responses. If you wanted to utilize a whiteboard or blackboard mode, you could do this as well or use this to import your own stickers to customize your response. When they click record, three, two, one. Hey everybody, it's uh, I think Thursday. My name's Ann, I'm just checking in, letting you know things are going well and I'm going to show you what happens next. When you pause it, you can go to the next screen. If you want to, you have the option to add more. I'm simply going to click next, take my selfie, and whoa, that's kind of a funny selfie, but I'm going to rock it out. Submit my video simply by clicking on that colorful button that says submit video. And you'll notice, congrats, it's now visible on the screen. And as an educator, this is what it looks like when students start populating your grid. All right, if I were to click into this individual topic, I as an educator see all of these ways I can provide feedback and get that shared to my students. What I want to do right now is point out one of my other favorite features of Flipgrid, and that is the Disco Library. Across the top of the screen, you'll notice these tabs. If you click on the Disco Library, you'll notice an incredible database of ready to use topics from the Flipgrid community as well as featured partners. You could click on this learning from home tile and have all kinds of awesome topics that you could use immediately in your classroom. When you click into a topic, simply choose the grid you want to add it to. What you'll do is click add, edit anything you need to, update the topic, and then you're ready to share it with your community. So again, the Disco Library is full of incredible resources from incredible featured partners like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Wonderopolis, and please know if you scroll down, you have all of this other content as well in these featured Disco playlists from awesome partners like Microsoft Hacking STEM, Skype in the Classroom, BBC Learning, MSN Kids, and beyond. 
friends, I know I'm going through a lot of information very, very quickly, but I just wanted you to know, again, as Joey mentioned, we have so many incredible resources for you. And I wanna take a moment and actually click through them again. Before I leave this screen though, I want to come back and just remind you, across the top when you see those different options where it says my grids, that's home base for you. And that's how you get started by adding a new grid. You can see right here, this is the most recent grid that I've created. You as the educator have all kinds of ways that you can utilize this tool to connect. But again, I just wanna point out whether you're utilizing Microsoft Teams or other ways to connect with your community, you simply share that grid code, that flip code, and that is the unique code that your students enter when they go to flipgrid.com or launch the free Flipgrid app on their mobile device. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is actually toggle back to that flipgrid.com website. And again, I mentioned that quick shortcut to remote learning. I wanna share one other resource before I pass it back to the team. And that is our Flipgrid Resource Center. You have access to all kinds of fabulous tools to support you as you are supporting your community. We have a quick start guide, that step-by-step -step guide to remote learning, as well as additional resources. And I wanna point this out, that we are offering live professional development every single day. You can get a join code there and continue on, take a little bit of a deeper dive into the Flipgrid tool if you want to. We'd love to have you. We also have a link to our help center and what we call integration docs. And the integration docs are awesome grade and content specific resources that you can access. But earlier, Mike mentioned the Family Learning Center. And I wanna take a quick scroll through this as this is an incredible resource for your community to utilize. Looking to learn together, you can find activities by age, you can go down into a learning schedule and set up some routine and structure for your community or find incredible activities, launch them, find ways to make those connections. What I love to say to my first grade students was building our brain power, but also playing and having fun connecting. So this is available for you. That Family Learning Center is a brand new resource from Microsoft that we are happy, happy, happy to share with you. I know our whole team means this wholeheartedly when we say, we are here to support you. And the conversations that start today in this webinar do not have to end today. So please feel free to reach out. Let us know if we can help you. And I'm gonna throw it back to the team so we can field any Q&A or get on to the next topic as needed. Great, thanks, Anne. So what we're gonna do now is just do a little quick wrap up while Anne and Jess are able to address any questions. And if Bryce, you're able to put the slides back up, be great. And for those of you that don't already know Anne and Jess, they are all over Twitter and helpful and engaging with any questions educators have out there. So follow them, tweet them out, and they'll be sure to get back to you. So we're just gonna do a quick wrap up here and recapping, these are the core resources, the Microsoft ED Remote Learning Site, Team Education Quick Start Guide, and then sign up for the Teams Remote Learning Community or share it with someone who isn't already in the community and we'd love to have you. And then today's PowerPoint will be posted in just a few minutes. So if you missed it today and you wanna grab the entire PowerPoint deck, you can go to that link. Always there's support for educators and schools at our support site and we encourage you to use that if you have any questions or hit any issues. And then coming up next, the last uh, cut slide here is what's coming tomorrow in the next couple of days. So we're, we're gonna be doing staff collaboration and awesome with Kathy Cavanaugh and then Meredith Rowe who's done remote learning Western Australia for a couple of years all things they've been living the life in Western Australia and she'll be coming to talk from there to what talk about what they're doing on Monday we've got how to do remote PD which is a big topic 
we're going to again have Kathy Kavanaugh, Robin Rivnats, and then Becky Keene will be joining us. And then on Tuesday, we're going to talk to Michelle Zimmerman from Rent and Prep and all the great stuff that they've been doing with distance learning. And they've got K through eight. So they're doing with younger kids as well. And with that, we're going to close out. This is our third show. And hopefully everyone will get better and let us know what you want to hear about and who you want to hear from. And we will try and get those folks on here soon enough. Thanks, everyone.